We know you can relate. You're on a tight schedule, a tight budget, and your vehicle is doing this. <laughs> I hate stuff like this. I hate stuff like this. <laughs> but it's all about staying positive, working our way through obstacles, and staying focused on the milestones. Like finally reaching Canada after two years of waiting. That is, of course, if there's no issue at the border. Okay, we are at the International Service Dealer Parts folks. Last night, they plugged it into the computer and the bus threw a couple codes. We finally got our coat. So, so far we get a coat that says injector uh, pressure signal is out of range. That's what we're dealing with right now. So hopefully, uh, this won't take many hours because 135 an hour. It make your wallet cry. <laughs> So here's what they're saying. They need to do a full diagnostic on the injection system tomorrow. They also need to see the records of past repairs. Now, if the issue is related to the engine rebuild we did in Mexico, their whole bill will be covered by warranty. But that's only if the shop we went to is an international dealer. Y entonces lo trajimos a un, a un dealer internacional aquí en, en el estado de Maine, en el norte de Estados Unidos. Y nos dijeron uh -huh. de que si ustedes son un dealer autorizado de, de internacional, que ellos cubren garantía. No, de, cum, de nada más de Cummins. Ah, uh, ya. Yeah. I hate stuff like this. I hate stuff like this. Like, it just makes me go back to that moment and think, oh my gosh, we should have done all that work with the international dealer in town like had we known i'm so tired of this nonsense i'm just so tired of this with this bus you know we try so hard we try so hard to be preventative to avoid issues like we we really really try hard and it's just one thing after the next i feel like it's like scales on a fish with this bus it's like we resolve one thing and then another thing and then another thing and then another thing and then another thing and it's just like bleeding us you know okay Time to go take them the service records and see what they have to say. So now we know that no matter what, this repair won't be covered by warranty, which is a big bummer. Of course, we won't know what the repair will be until they do that big diagnostic test tomorrow. So what do we do in the meantime? Explore. We are in Bangor, Maine. Sancho, our reliable, awesome little Sanchito, is ready and raring to take us out to explore Bangor, Maine. The engine issue is completely out of our control at this point, so there's no use dwelling on it. Instead, we can choose to see the positive all around us. The sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, and we are in a cool city with lots to see. So we're going out to see it. We are downtown Bangor, Maine. Look, there's a cool mural coming up, love. Nice. <clears throat> That's a nice mural. Very beautiful. Okay, so here's what they're doing. They're hooking Bobby up to a computer that is going to run a bunch of tests on the health of the engine. It's kind of like an EKG at the cardiologist. Go 30 degrees more. Right. If you want to bring it up again, sorry. It's, oh wait, no, sure. we got one degree. Yeah, it's bouncing on me, so it won't take the test. <laughs> oh. What I do every 
every day, stare at a laptop. <laughs> Bigger trucks out. <laughs> it's like she's getting like a, what's that called? When they, when they run your heart? Heart monitor on it? Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. That's watching your injection pressures. So that pass the flying color is no problem there. Let's run one more test. So this is testing your injectors. Getting an EKG I didn't know right you now. can control the engine like that with the computer, that's awesome. Absolutely. So the wave pattern is a lot closer together on number one than it is number two. So the computer doesn't like one and five, so one is one and five. Um, and the reason being is the fuel flow rate that's coming out of them while it's commanding it is what's making the pattern so tight compared to stretched out. It's not spraying as much fuel as the computer wants to see. But usually a tighter pattern is a quick spray and a, like a uh, wider pattern like your one and five cylinder is is uh it's not making a perfect spray some's coming out of like one nozzle one's coming out of the other nozzle because the end of your injector has like three little holes and it's supposed to do a fine mist and you're either going to have too much dump out of one or not enough out of another and it messes with the mist which messes with the fuel rate so that'll be a future issue but that's not your check engine light problem so what you can do to try to address that without diving into the engine or mm -hmm. into the cover is uh, like some Pico fuel additive. Um, it's a high lubricant, high detergent, it cleans. I tighten up the ECM connectors quite a bit. That could have had something to do with it. So I'd say roll with that. I hate to send you not doing anything, but I'm pretty confident that you'll make it where you're going. But if you do have any issues, you know, they're gonna have to address, tell them it's an electrical, not a mechanical problem. I'll lift that leak for you real quick. So yeah, if you wanna shut it off, and uh, if you don't mind unplugging the mess, I'll take this. Sure. I'll look at them leaks and we'll see. And then maybe you can make your decision from there. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. So that pump would have to be removed and a new seal installed and put back together. Is that a big job? Uh, it'd be an hour. Okay. And then the return line's leaking a little bit, but that looks like just tightening the clamp. So here's the recap. Those two leaks are minor and won't leave us stranded. They can be handled later. They might even fix themselves because there's a chance they are only happening because different parts of the engine are warming up at different rates after the long winter. The Warren engine light installing is not related to the rebuild in Mexico. It's most likely from fuel that got gunky after sitting in the tank all winter. So we're going to add a cleaner to the fuel to scrub out the injection system. They also said we could try replacing the ICP sensor. So if cleaning the injection system doesn't fix the problem, that's what we'll do. And that's something we can do on our own. We wish we had a more clear answer, but there's no way to know until we try cleaning out the injection system. So crossing our fingers. We are doing the paperwork to be able to enter Canada. And then what is your official language of choice? French. <laughs> it says that people are only required to quarantine if you're not qualified as fully vaccinated. So we shouldn't have to do a quarantine. This is an exciting border crossing. This will be Bobby's second border crossing of the project. And we've been waiting a long time to get here. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't cross in 2020 and we couldn't cross in 2021 either. 2022 is finally our year. That is, if they let us in. All right, let's go to Canada. Let's go to Canada. All right, so we're back on the highway. Bobby's running fine. The light is now coming back on. So that's pretty good. And it looks beautiful out here. Spring is in full swing, the temperature is really nice, it's about 70 degrees out there and the leaves from the trees are coming back, so it's looking really beautiful. I love driving on small country roads like this one because you get to see more of the country this way and driving on the highway, usually the speed limit is around 70 miles per hour and Bobby only goes like 55, 60 miles an hour, more or less. And it's really stressful driving on a highway that everyone's going so fast. And then you get a lot of cars behind you, you know, trying to pass you all the time.
now we're going through the town of Madison. Beautiful town. It has the typical New England architecture. Beautiful, beautiful houses. And churches. Some of this building has facades that remind me a lot of the old west. Which is really cool. And usually the architecture is always seen downtown or on the main street. Now we're getting to see more mountains, more pine trees. This is my first time in the state of Maine and I'm really happy that we're doing this ride for this road. So as Jose mentioned, we are driving across the great state of Maine. We are driving from Bangor straight across all the way to the border with Canada. Maine really is a very interesting state. It is massive, with a land area of over 30,000 square miles and 18 million acres of forest land. But its population is only about 1.3 million people. And the majority of that population is focused along the coastline. So there is a lot of land in Maine that is just open and wild. It is an outdoorsman's paradise. The people are rugged and friendly and know how to take care of themselves. Maine is quite a place. We've been driving for two and a half hours now and Bobby seems to be doing great. The light came back on for less than a minute, just about an hour ago, and then it went back off, but nothing happened, so the engine did it all. Now we are about six miles from the place we're gonna spend the night. We are halfway to Montreal. Tomorrow we're gonna cross the border to Canada, so hopefully, We'll make it to Montreal with no hiccups. We are gonna be spending the night next to a lake. So we always like camping next to the water. So I'm excited to park and enjoy this amazing area. It's really beautiful. I think this is where we're gonna be parking. So the entrance gotta be right here to the left. It's right here made it to our destination. This road is really narrow. Cora is running behind me, so I'm gonna wait for her to go in and let me know if it's an easy road to get to with the bus, because we don't want to get stuck again. We've done that way too many times. I've been trying to reach Cora through the radio, but she's not answering, and I just noticed that I got a text while I was driving, and she's saying that she's staying behind using the internet at the gas station, which is 15 miles back, because we were anticipating that this place might not have signal, and it turns out it doesn't. I'm gonna have to go and check this place on foot because I don't want to go in and get stuck. The road looks really narrow. And uh-oh, this doesn't look good. Oh man. I don't think I can get through here. We got all these branches here that will definitely scratch and maybe break the solar panels. Then we got these big branches here. I mean, it's actually three trees smashed together here. Even if I come and do a wide turn here, it's gonna be just way too low. The campground is supposed to be just like not even half a mile that way. Uh, I'm gonna go and check it out just to see. What a beautiful place. It would have been so nice to be able to park here and spend the night. Unfortunately, we can't get the bus in. I know that we had a little ax somewhere in the bus. If only I could find it, I'm pretty sure I could cut those trees down and clear the way to enter to the campground with the bus. But I don't see it anywhere. I found the axe, so I should be able to cut those trees and clear the way. Almost there with the first tree. This one is going to be a toughie. It's a lot thicker. But the wood is pretty soft, so I'm confident that I can do this. Two 
almost down. Just gotta cut this loop over here. I just got here to the bus, and I walk in. I go, Wicho, mi amor, where are you? And he's not here. I think, well, where the heck is he? And then I see this. I see uh, <laughs> the cover to a, a hatchet that we have. <laughs> Let's go see what he's up to. What are you doing, Paul Bunyan? Three trees fell, and they were like too low for, for the bus to go. So uh, I went to find the, ox, <laughs> the axe that Uncle Tom gave us. What? And I was able to cut two trees. So now I have one more to go. So you took these down. I they weren't down, yeah. you I, chopped down these trees. Yeah, with a little arc. Oh my god. This is my partner, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Tree number three. Thank you, Uncle Tom. There you go. On the trail he blazed. You gotta go really slow on this road because it's very bumpy. This is where the trees were. Everything's good so far. It's really bumpy here. But we're almost there. That wasn't as bad as I uh, thought it was gonna be. It's been a pretty smooth ride. Made it. Well, Jose's determination paid off, and now we get to spend the night next to a little piece of heaven. We even got the bus parked with enough time to catch the sunset, which we're gonna go enjoy with a little walk along the lakeside. It's a beaver. Awesome, I've never seen one in the wild. Hi, buddy. It's coming here. Friendly. It's a great feeling to be back on the road. I'm oh. a happy camper. I'm a happy camper. What are you doing down here? Hey, just admiring the beauty of this place one more time before we head out. It's kind of sad to arrive to a place like this and not being able to stay for more than one day. At the same time, I know that the moment we enter Canada and we start driving up to Alaska, there's gonna be so many beautiful places like this. This place has been amazing. I'm glad that we were able to get in and enjoy this place at least for a little bit of time. Canada, here we come. back on the pavement and we are about five miles from the border I believe hopefully everything will go smooth no problems and hopefully we can make it to Montreal this afternoon that'll be nice Hi, 
So Cora's over there. Hey, doing her paperwork. Any issue with my plant babies? Your plants are doing great. As long as they stay in the bus, there's no problem. You're all set? Thank you. You can wait for him over there if you want to. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a nice travel. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Everything was good. Bobby was able to turn up. And everything went smooth. We are in Canada. We are in Quebec. We're gonna go now to see if we can find a place where we can get a SIM card for our phones because since yesterday we have been completely disconnected from the internet. Okay, this is the moment I have to change the car from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Canada. Laura's really happy. I hear a happy camper. We're in Canada. <laughs> yes, we are finally after two years of waiting. Fourteen. <laughs> Aha! We are finally here. After two years of being stuck, Art We There Yet has entered its third country. We immediately enter the small town of Woburn in the province of Quebec. Unfortunately, we can't stay long here because we are aiming to get all the way to Montreal today. What's waiting for us in Montreal? Well, I'll let you know in a bit, but first, let's talk about this drive. Beautiful country in quaint small towns, very similar to Maine, of course. Only here in Quebec, the primary language is French. Bobby Bus is rocking it. There are some 11% grade hills on this drive, but she is soaring up them with power her old engine never had. Before we know it, we're entering Montreal. Montreal. We are on our way to the music event. Good morning, Montreal. So we are about um, 14 minutes away, I believe. All right, so let's get going. All right, so we've kept you in suspense long enough. Just what the heck are we doing here in Montreal? What is this event? How are we a part of it? And what's the story behind that awesome bus? We are here for the grand finale of Secondaire en Spectacle, which is an awesome youth program that engages high school students in the arts and the celebration of the French language. Every year, students at 275 high schools across Quebec put together performances, which they perform at a local show. The winners from that show go on to perform at a regional final, and the winners of the regional final come here to be a part of the big event, the Pan-Quebec Rendezvous. The mission of this event is to engage students in the performing arts, to boost self-esteem and a sense of belonging, to strengthen ties across regions of Quebec, and to provide the space for cultural expression in the French-speaking context. Now, the big event is going to be this evening, when each finalist will give the performance that got them here to Montreal. But in the meantime, there's a whole day to fill with enrichment activities for the kids. There are workshops and performing arts trainings going on, but also this is an event for kids from across Quebec to get to know each other to form bonds of friendship, and to connect over their shared love of the arts. And what better way to do that than to set up a space for them to jam together? And that's where our dear Bobby Bus comes in. 
Bobby's whole mission right now is just to hold the space as a jam center. A place where a bunch of instruments are set up and the kids are encouraged to just come together, meet, collaborate, and make awesome music together. And finally, it is time for the big event. All against the backdrop of that big, beautiful bus. Nope, not that one. That one. This is Mix Bus Studio, the brainchild of Isabel and Jacob. They actually have two other buses like this for a total of three. Each one is unique, but all with the same mission, to provide space for artists to do their thing. These buses are set up as mobile stages with full-service lighting, sound, live streaming, the works. The buses even serve as recording space for live sessions. You should definitely follow these guys. They are running the show tonight, and man, what a show these kids are about to put on. Uh, bonjour à tous, uh, je m'appelle Jason. <laughs> Cool that we get to see a show from our living room. Look at this. This year, The Rendezvous is actually traveling to different regions rather than having everyone congregate in one huge festival. COVID regulations, you know. So this means there is another big performance planned in a town nearby, and so here we are. <laughs> stop, 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 stop! No! <laughs> Bobby Bus is holding the space again, just silently sitting back and opening up a judgment-free zone for collaboration. And the kids are totally into it. And what talent! If you don't love me now, you
Now the show is about to get started and there is something super, I mean super exciting about to happen in our world. Now there is someone who we cross paths with in a very different part of the world. Someone who became like family. And it just so happens that he's been here in Montreal for a little while now. Joel is here. There is a whole story to tell you here. And we'll tell you it all next time on Aren't We There Yet? Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Aren't We There Yet journey. Join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.